<laughs> do you realize when you go somebody, you affect their, their their mental, you affect their mental health, and you you affect their their self esteem. That means their self esteem. So you ruin. Really, no, that doesn't mean that. That means you contribute to their self esteem issues. If you ain't reach out to me either, and we just both not reaching out to each other. We have a silent mutual agreement. No, but what I'm yeah, that's a silent mutual mm -hmm. agreement. But let's go back to. Mm -hmm. The immature of ghosting. Why you have to call it immature? Because it is. Why can't you just say that, hey, I do not feel the same, hey, I'm not in it for you anymore, or I don't see us being on the same page, or this is not where I expected to go. Because my mind changes as, as it is. So communicate that. No, I don't want him to feel like I'm, I don't want him to know that I'm fickle. Welcome back to another great episode of the 25 and Over Club. Yeah. <laughs> it's your boy, Billy the Bad Guy, Billy the Gold, Billy the Kid, Bills, Bills, Bills. And it's me, Renee, aka Renee Proper, and you are watching another wonderful episode of the 25 and Over Club, where life gets real after the age of 25, man. See there? How y'all feeling? I feel good. I feel good. Okay, James couple. Brown. I lost a couple pounds and I'm feeling real good. Well, bitch, whatever you're doing, tell me what the fuck I'll I... tell you off the air. Okay, well, bitch. Because the hoes love to tussle on Instagram about what we be taking to lose weight. Mind your fucking business. Well, whatever you taking, <laughs> you taking that, I'm taking dick. So we taking two different things. Dick ain't never made me lose no weight. I always got fat when no, I got No, dick made up. me lose weight sometimes because sometimes I be stressed over a nigga. Okay. I thought you meant like when you get in the regular, like real boot up. You ever had like lockdown with a nigga for... Days on end, and y'all just ordering, laying down, fucking eating. Oh, yeah, that's all the time. So I, <laughs> I really don't lose weight with a nigga. I actually gain weight. Me and too. And then they made me gain a 50 pounds, and mm -hmm. then I look, un not unattractive, but then I look like a fucking like, whale. Like, no, that's the, that's the, that's the, um, what they call it, a happy weight. No, no, I'm not happy, though, with that weight. <laughs> like, now I gotta lose this shit. You catch yourself like, hold on now. I never caught myself. That's the problem. Oh. All right. Well, before we do the catch up, I want to give a few fan shout outs. And this episode is really special because a lot of y'all helped make this epi this outline. So I want to give a shout out to Twyla H, Kimberly the Realtor, Elaine um, on Instagram at Call Him Clay, Deja, who you doing? And Leanne. Y'all, y'all been reaching out and y'all been supporting heavy. Y'all yes. been helping contribute to this outline. Y'all mm -hmm. been watching the show and supporting. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. the outline, the catch-up is, my catch-up is, bitch, I went to the Beyonce concert, and y'all know I'm on the cloud motherfucking nine. That's why I had to wear my $55 merch shirt. It's 55 Yeah, I don't know why I did it, but I guess because I was just in the moment. I could print some. I could. I know a guy that could print some of those no, no, if y'all no. wanted for the loan. It's the one-year anniversary of the Renaissance. I get that thing right off the internet and print them on shirts. I want my tag to say, Beyonce, extra large. I can do that, too. You probably can. Yeah. But I want the real shit. I want a cut. I want a piece of the pie. I'm trying to hustle. They probably gonna chase me away. My stepfather away. just called me today. He told me his friend went to he his friend bought Beyonce tickets for five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Went out there at the show mm -hmm. and sold his tickets for fifteen hundred dollars. And so got was, and, and and got got a sale. And yeah, mm -hmm. and sold the tickets. Wow. So he was telling me just he was like because you know I'm on the, on the play for it. <laughs> and he was telling me that he was like you should have just sold your Beyonce tickets so you could pay your rent for this month. Nigga, I don't care if I had $2 on my account, which I did. <laughs> I'm never selling my Beyonce tickets. <laughs> Bitch, I was on the Beyonce. I was on Ticketmaster the next day for the next show trying to find tickets for $2. Where can I sit for $2? And it was nowhere. At all. But shout out to Gabby, because Gabby bought her tickets the day of the show we went to, and her tickets was $150. But her tickets were saying, don't. Can't see the show, listen only. How does that even work? You stand behind something, something's blocking your view, and you can only hear it for $150. If I wanted to do that, I could put the download the YouTube show on my phone and listen to it. So just uh, people just can buy that ticket and just spunk, just shimmy their way down. And that's exactly what Gabby did. Because I know a lot of people were standing in the in the stairway, dancing and standing around. So just you know, there was around. one thing about MetLife, they were serious about not standing in the stairway. Gabby, oh. um, she had to shim me down. It was just an amazing experience. Like just going, I love that um Brie and Gabby never saw her before and they just like right, right. had their Beyonce virginity taken away. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh my God. Like she was the you won't break my soul and the 
Ban me off, I'm hot, 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 like stolen Chanel, lock me up in jail. Cuff me, please, cause the same fit. Oh my God, and my niece, mm -hmm. Blue Ivy Carter. She was there. You can see oh. her. You can see how much, how much more comfortable she's gotten from the first. Oh, my bitch is now. bad. She could she's dance so better good. than a lot of these motherfuckers that I know. Including my me. bitch was dancing. Yes, yes. Including <laughs> me. Well, not me, because I would have battled that bitch. <laughs> get loose, get low. Blue was going the fuck off. Um, oh my God. If y'all saw my Instagram, I was literally screaming. I did a little vlog. I don't know when it'll be posted up because I'm. Hello, a and for your friends that are at home and you at the show, post your fucking videos. Don't be a stingy bitch. <laughs> yeah, Renee texted me. She was like, like, "Bitch, bitch I was waiting videos. for you to post the video." Yeah, I was but late. The, the but the service, is bad. I know. I, 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 that's that's when I, that's why I, I eased up on you. I'm like, I get yeah. I know the service is bad, but I'll be waiting for the videos. Post haste. Her, her <laughs> outfits was amazing. It was just three hours of long content. But I feel like definitely people need to go see it. Like, the See the Show is amazing. If they, see, if they didn't come to your city yet, go see it. If you go have the money to fly out to go see her, go see her. Um, you know, but yeah, I'm let's, also... Let's touch on the fact that in every generation, there's, like, some greats. And you can hear you can hear people from even from the past. I'm like... I mean, not every generation, because Generation every, Z don't got nobody. Every generation has their greats. You cannot generation tell Generation Z got? Listen, I'm talking about the... Can I finish my oh, segment? okay. Thanks. Even from the past, you could speak to your older aunt's mom, dad, whatever, and, and they were around when, like, Michael Jackson was in their prom, and they're like, I never went. Like, try to go and see somebody from your era in their prime. Like, go and see one of these artists. And it's like, you know, and they'll tell you, oh, Michael Jackson's my favorite. I'm like, have you ever seen him in concert? They'll tell you no. no. And I'm pretty sure there was, you know, things why they couldn't go. But if you are able to go and see your fave, whoever it may be, go and see them before, because trust me, not everybody's gonna, even if that person is your fave, they might not be, have a long career like a Beyonce, but go out and if you like an artist, go out and go see them in person so you can have some, so you can feel that. Like, I hate that I saw Beyonce because every time I go to somebody else's concert, I'd be like, this is the bare minimum. This is real low main, like real plain. <laughs> low main? <laughs> like, this is really boring. Like, this is real, like, where is the spice to the shit? Like, my bitch, it got a production. Like, but it's, a, it's, it's, I don't think it's fair to compare those artists to. Beyonce. I just love it's an experience, different. and if you're not gonna give me experience, like Drake's concert, I didn't go, but I saw the videos on Instagram. It looks very boring sitting on that um sugar that's, cube. But that's where that's where that's where opinions differ because I don't find stuff like that boring. He's rapping. I can hear what he's saying. I like the li I like. I'm listening to the verse because he's a rapper. You're you're there to hear the bars and stuff. You're not there to see. Not everybody's. But for those prices, I need a production. Beyonce give you for those prices. I need a production. I could pay fifty dollars to see you at Webster Hall in New York but most, City. But most artists, most artists don't set ticket prices. You if you really think Beyonce set them damn prices. I don't know. Most most artists don't set those prices. I mean, Beyonce has some. She has yes, a little say, touch. She, a say, she has a little course. say in it. Right, but and I understand. Don't... Like even Gabby said that after the show. Gabby was like, "Those prices, I understand why the my bitch came out of a fucking shell." Because that's just what that's just that's just how she presents her art to the world. Not everybody. And if you want somebody, so you to want Drake to come out in leotards and start dancing. No. Is that what you're saying? Because he's a rapper. I don't want him to do that. But give backup dancers, give production. Drake has no song that requires backup dancers. All right, well, I don't want to see you <laughs> sitting on the ice cube on the fucking stage. I, like, know the... I like stuff like that. Like, you know, I like, I like, I'll get my goon bag and my bars mm -hmm. and get prepared and be like, like, I like stuff like that. I'll go to a concert and listen to different, because my mind is open. Because I'm not going to go, I'm just like, your expectations are, oh, this so-and-so artist does this, and this is what they're up there to do. Because mm -mm. if I go to a Lil Wayne concert and I'm gonna go before, but it, it and anybody depends. tell me nothing, I will be. Fi I'll jump across the room. I am going to another show though. Mm -hmm. Um, how un unemployed and with no job, I am going to another show. Um, I'm with gonna, the faith of a, what they call it? Um, the fate of a mustard seed. No, you know what my son <laughs> called me. Shout out to my son who's here. My son said, "Mr. Make it happen." Mr. Make it. And happen. after he said that, I said, "You know what, son? I do make it happen mm -hmm. every single time." Anywho, what you got going on with you? Like I said, I've just been working, like working at um doing hair and stuff like way more often now. So it's been that's been a task. Um being it's not entrepreneurship is not as smooth as people like it's chucked up to be because you could be you could have a day where you're there from twelve to like four. And you have a day where you're there from eight to fucking two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get 
the scheduling together because I'm the type of I'm the type of stylist that'd be like, oh, I want to come do my hair tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, come on. If I'm if I'm free, mm-hmm. if I don't have a, a slot for that time, I'm like, come on. I'm not one of these hoes that'd be like, I'm so going to site and like go down, scroll down, and put what are you getting curls? Yeah, I, no, not me, but call me, bitch, call oh, yeah. me. Would mm. you have a fucker fear? No, I will not. Um, there's a new follower that he's a new listener to the podcast. Mm-hmm. I think I know he followed you because I looked at his follows, no, and he was like, "I'm a new, I'm a new listener of the show and a new mm-hmm. fan of the show." Mm-hmm. And baby, when I tell you that man looked good, okay. I said, "Baby, you're fucking employees. Of course you go fuck a fan." Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, I mean I went fucking, but damn, that nigga looked good. But at that <laughs> point, this is all I think about. I don't care. It's do do what you want. But at that point, he's not a fan anymore. Now he's my man. I just met him. Through networking, through the you know show. what is one nigga that I um that found us through horrible. Actually, I think he's coming up here. We're we're working that out. Okay. You know what? It's not. I'm gonna fuck him. We're going out on a date. Yep. That might potentially yeah. lead to having a little bit of sex. Well, single married situationship segment mm-hmm. comes from actually the one I was just talking about at Call Him Clay, and he's asked us how do how to properly stop dating someone. How do you tell someone um you don't want to date them anymore? Elaborate, cause I don't know, man. I'm a ghoster. You see, yeah, and that and it's so hard, cause I never properly told anybody that. I think I have formally done it before, but I, it depends on the person. You see, but I never properly ended things. Okay, so, so see, so, cause so, I'm not just dating likeness. anybody. Like, if I dating you, we go together. Okay. And like, um, I never really say, "Hey, this is not working out." Mm-hmm. I'm gonna just end it on some toxic shit. You okay. feel me? So all my relationships ended or my dating relationships ended because of of some toxic shit. Mm -hmm. But I think the proper way is to say, hey, thank you for the mature way, which I'm stepping into now. The mature way is to say, hey, you know, thank you for the amazing times that we had together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, I can see us being friends. Mm-hmm. I don't see this going far. And just being honest, I think the more you delay the conversation, mm-hmm. the more the person's feelings might be invested and involved, and the more the heartache may affect them. That is such a... What's your answer? answer? Me, I what I do, I, I have a process. So mm-hmm. uh, the, the conversation gets... Um, more sporadic in between. There's no more like much good morning talk. I take longer to answer texts. Yeah. Um. The freak. If I see used to see you five, four times a week, now I'm seeing you once a week, and taking you know fizzling, taking my time and severing because, and this is this is not good because you don't want. What if something re sparks the relationship? You don't want to just be like, nah, I don't want to be together. Cause in the middle of you trying to date, it, something might happen and y'all reignite the flame. So I don't want. I take my time and step back, and then I'll sprint forward. <laughs> <laughs> you see, no, nah, I don't know. Like again, I never was in a position to end something with somebody. Really? Yeah, like to say you to just date- don't be like, I don't want to fuck with this nigga no more, and just stop. You get the morning texts that like, you ever get that one text and they irking you? Be like. No, mm-hmm. I'm not dating you just to say, oh, we're dating now. I'm dating you because I actually like you and I'm yeah. invested. So now we're at this far. And oh, I see you I'm, 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 maybe I'm misinterpreting it. Maybe I was like, okay, we're in a relationship. How you, they said, and dating, yeah, dating, not in a relationship. How do you stop dating someone? I just stopped talking to that nigga. I don't know so you, you real, for real, yeah. See, you don't but, owe, I don't owe you nothing. Clap your hands if, you, if you're a king and queen of ghosting. I don't owe you, I don't owe you shit. Nothing. No, but that's what so you know immature. about my favorite color. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Do you realize when you go somebody, you affect their, their their mental, you affect their mental health, and you you affect their their self esteem. That means their self esteem. So you're ruined. Me. No, that doesn't mean that. That mm-hmm. means you contribute to their self esteem issues. We're dating, so okay. Let's paint paint a paint a picture. We're dating. We went on a couple of days. We're talking on the phone. Have we have we started having? Because I don't consider having sex dating. Uh-huh. We're not having sex. Wait, you're not having sex during dating? No. So what are you doing? That's not my man. What I'm fucking him for? You don't... <laughs> you ain't reach out to me either, and we just both not reaching out to each other. We have a silent mutual agreement. No, but what I'm... Yeah, that's a silent mutual mm-hmm. agreement. But let's go back to mm-hmm. the immature of ghosting. Why you have to call it immature? Because it is. Why can't you just <laughs> say that, hey, I do not feel the same... Hey, 
I'm not in it for you anymore or I don't see us being on the same page or this is not where I expected to go. Because my mind changes as, as the days so go So communicate by. that. No, I don't want him to feel like I'm... I don't want him to know that I'm fickle. Why not? So so your pride is having... It's not about pride. I might feel this way and I don't want my emotions to get the best of me and end something that might be good. Oh, so you're selfish. I'm, no, I'm thoughtful. Toxic. I'm thoughtful. If I'm just if I just get up today and be like, you know what, I don't want to be with this nigga no more. And maybe tomorrow I might change my mind. I'm not gonna make that rash decision today. I'm not doing it. Okay, so but you can't just say, oh, today I don't want to fuck with you, but maybe in the future I want to fuck with you. How my how dare you? That, not in the future. Maybe tomorrow or a few days I might feel differently. Relationships are a roller coaster. No. If you decide to stop fucking with him, like, how do you feel? I didn't decide though. I just felt like I wanted to. That is extremely toxic That's as fuck. That's not. It's honest. I'm being extremely transparent. Okay. This is how people feel. No, you. No, people feel this <laughs> You. Because feel this clap your hands if you agree with her. Somebody out there feels me. Yeah. T- <laughs> yeah that, you were talking about ghosting, right? Like, yeah. I just think at some point, like, if you're not having sex and you just talking and we you just, just went on a couple of days, it's like, you're annoying me now. Like, yeah. I'm okay with just putting it down. Oh, I block people. Like, yeah, I'm okay. But you uh, you have to understand, by you doing that, you affect a person's self-esteem. You're right, and you that's why I say, we every our actions help ruin people all the time. Human interactions every single day is a risk. Welcome to the jump. But how do we become better? <laughs> how do we become better? Because I'm pretty sure if someone goes to you, how would that make you feel? Shit, but I'll get over it in a, while, in, a little, in a while. In a little while. Right, but do you like feeling like shit? No. So why treat... You ever heard the saying treat people... I'm not doing it to, like, get it. You know what, today? I'm going to make this person feel like shit today. It's no, not like No, but that. treat people the way you want to be treated. You will want somebody to have a conversation and explain the why not to Not really. You. I don't want them to tell me that you. Just don't stop talking to me. Just just so I'm clear. <laughs> I actually yeah, agree with that, Billy. I actually agree. Just stop talking just to me. Stop talking don't to me. Don't fucking... Don't... <laughs> Yeah, don't don't that. Don't say nothing to me. Don't close nothing with me. Just stop talking to me. I agree. Period. Because it's like, if you're not going to fuck with me, you're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't. I rather... Yeah, because they like, to op- they like to leave that open to communication. And I do, too. We on the same type of time. I like I'd to leave the door open, too. <laughs> give me... I'd rather somebody come up to me and say, hey, Billy, at the end of the day, you know... Um, this is not working because X, Y, and Z. So I can understand. This way, it could lead me to exp- um, it could lead me to fixing my ways, mm-hmm. or I can say, you know what, I agree with you. You know, but just don't ghost me because now I'm thinking something wrong with me. What if I'm already insecure about my my being? I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, and I'm what I'm saying to you is not that what I'm doing is for everybody. Is it okay? This is just what I. What I'm with. saying to you is. You could help. You could be better. I don't believe I'm contributing to anyone's self esteem. Yeah, guys. if you're ghosting me and I really like you, and you just ghost me, what if I could say maybe I'm ugly? Maybe maybe she don't like me because I don't have this. Maybe she don't like me because it I is, feel this, like this. those are things that were already bothering you. I can't. Me so, being with you can't fix that. So explain it to me. Hey, I don't see us being together because we're at two different stages of our life. Would you feel any differently whether I ghost you or told you? Um, yeah. What, well, how, how, why? I was like, oh, yeah. If you ghost me, I don't know why you stop communication with me. Okay. If you told me, I can understand, oh, that makes sense. If you come with your receipts, A, B, and C, um, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. But you ghosting me sure that you, maybe I shouldn't be with you because you lack communication. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> That's the point. But do you lack like communication? No, I don't. I just don't want to you talk do to if you. You do because you don't want to talk to me. That's not fair. It's not. Welcome to the jungle. Life isn't <laughs> fair. And the moment we get over that hump with humans, the world would be such a better place. The world isn't a fair place. Clap your hands if you agree with me. One thing about my son, he going to agree with me. And me and my son, <laughs> we've been... Yeah, we locked in. We always locked in, son. I know. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just letting you know this is how the other side. There's there's a yes. huge section and this of people. Other side that I'm that looking at is like. This, that, that so why thinks, can't you? Why can't you just? I don't freaking, know why yet. I don't do, know would why. Would you like? You should like look into that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel judged. No, I'm not judging, but <laughs> seriously, like. Just not. Just get up, you, Gilmar. You have not just up and not talk to somebody. Y'all can't be. Y'all not. Y'all really capping on Beyonce's internet today.
Okay, because... Let my son talk. Talk, give a Listen, man. Come and tell you something. I've, I've never done it wow. because there's nothing worse than not having closure. Nothing worse than like... Yes. If you want a closure, buy a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and that's how I feel. Some people need closure. Some people have attachment issues. So you can't say, oh, that's issues that you dealt with yourself. And, and, that's and, and, issues and let that me you had before. Pr- crystal clear. I'm talking about dating. If I'm in a full-blown relationship with you, and even if it's six years or six weeks, if we said we boyfriend and girlfriend, of course, I'm going to come and talk to you. But dating, no. Dating, I feel like you have a horrible... Nah. If, you, if you can't communicate during dating, you have a horrible trait. Horrible trait? That's a horrible That's trait. That's not not communicating. We were talking for a little while. It it just... The, the, the flame fizzled out. And we stopped talking. So why can't you just say, I don't see it? I don't it for- believe I owe him that. If I'm just dating you and we went on a couple dates and talking and texting, I don't owe you that. And you probably, you don't mm. owe me that either. If you gave it to me, that's cool. Well, would you that's like what somebody, you do. But you said you would like somebody to give it to you. I don't care if we're just dating and you feel like you want to stop talking to me. I stop feel like you're saying you don't me. care because it's easy to say you don't care. But for a second, have you ever been ghosted? Not from... Dating, yes, but not in a relationship. So how, when you got I ghosted... I didn't care. I didn't care. Didn't care. Mm. Did not give one shit. We got to dig deeper than that, because why it, it don't you nothing, think, like... I'm in, today, like, I'm as shallow as a fucking... Like, I, it's really, like, I'm... In this topic, I'm as shallow as a puddle. It's nothing below that surface. If nah, we're just dating insane. and talking... I don't owe you any emotional c- conversation, no think piece. You don't owe me that either. We are just dating. We went on dates. We did not exchange bodily fluids. You don't even know what my... You didn't even met my family. But what if you did exchange bodily fluids? No, that's what I'm saying. Dating... Because dating to me does not... I'm not having sex with somebody I'm just dating. Why not? See? That's your problem. That's why y'all need... You need a conversation. I'm not. I'm not fucking somebody if we just dating. Fucking... Yeah. Me? What do you consider dating? Talking. Y'all went out on a date, so y'all getting to know each other. We're dating. We're getting to know each other. We're talking. Yeah, we probably kiss and stuff like that, but we haven't been sexual but yet. But what if you're dating for months? You owe me an explanation of why this does not work. I don't date for months. By the third day, easy that we go together, we don't. If that's unrealistic. It's, it's realistic because I'm telling you, as a person of my right. age, I've done it. I've never dated for that long. Never dated for that long. Either we go so together. So how long you think you should date a person for? By, by the like fourth date, you should know if you want to cuff me or not. By the fourth date, yeah. I say after three months, that's when three you know. Three months? Who's wasting twelve weeks? After three months, no. <laughs> twelve after, no, weeks? No, let's be fair. After three months, a nigga know how to be on his what best behavior doing? for three weeks. What are we doing okay? for three months though? Three months, you still learning a person. It's not to that six month mark when niggas start acting retarded. So, so, so you're gonna tell me you sex, you having sex and stuff, and this person. So has what? A... What sex? But like, right. I have sex with everybody. You know what? Let's end the show. Pat this shit up. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> but that's them. I can't speak for nobody, but I can't speak for nobody but Rene. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Proper. I don't date no nigga for no three months. Okay. By I three think months, that's, that's reason- my boy. Clap your hands if you think dating for three months is reasonable. That's too long. That's twelve and weeks, And that's when bro. you, and that's when, after six months, you realize you're dating a psychotic bitch, bitch, bitch. And then we're not dating no more. That's my boyfriend now. No, you know, yeah, your boyfriend's psychotic. And we yeah, break, no, we break up. You got, you got in the relationship after three months, and then four, month four, he beating you and have your head between the washer and the dryer. Let me, let me, daddy, let me tell me, look your dead in your eye right now. No boy. Bitch, I know you. <laughs> you be on your best behavior for the first three months. And then after that, they find out you're psychotic. And wow, I've always been in long-term relationships. So let me tell you something. Somebody lying to you, baby. Somebody Yo, lying to you. Nah. Because one I thing about it be... and two things for sure. I'm not talking about this like a like a like some like some like hypothetical. I'm uh-huh. talking about some shit I know. Some shit I know. And I can only speak from my own experience. Nah. Why is everybody calling? Let's Everybody's on, calling on, me. My boy is like, calling Jesus me. Jesus Christ. Cut this My side out. nigga calling me like, damn. This girl. Cut this part the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you never listen. You never listen and cut shit out. But this time, I swear to God. If you don't fucking cut this Mind you. Mind you. I said, I'm not telling this out. <laughs> Please do not give me another season this is. <laughs> um...
Whew, all, right. all right, let's read. So I gotta cut that out for real. Yes, dead ass. Okay. Dead ass. Like, Patreon. Dead ass. All right. So what are some common signs that indicate it's time to end a dating oh. or romantically relationship, right? Um, and for me, it is when that that feeling of when I dread linking up with you, mm-hmm. or when you say, you know what, I can't make it that's today. What I'm I love about. when you cancel plans. Right, that's what I'm talking about. They send that little text message, and you go, "That's the feeling." But that's different. The feeling of when you know it's over. So communicate and say it's just not there anymore, bro. I'm sorry. Just let them know why, Renee. Sometimes, sometimes you people need explanations. Not when I'm and dating. Like my son said, I'm the closure. Die on that hill. I'm the die closure. On the closure is necessary. The dating part, I'm dying on. The dating part, I'm gonna die on that hill. I'm. I tell you nothing. You gonna tell me nothing. I feel like it depends on the chemistry. If you, if the chemistry was never really there, I feel like you could tell it won't even matter. Um, if it's like months, like when they say she won't do, then you probably would owe that person an explanation. Cause you don't go six months dating, Damn, barbecues and all that. And then you just stop. You Thank, like, you resting, <laughs> Thank you, resting bitch face. She basically, it's, she it's basically, Shantae. Explained, <laughs> she basically <laughs> explained a common ground. I don't care if we were on two dates. You explained oh, to me. Oh, now you dragging it, bro. You still explained to me why <laughs> didn't it work. Two days, two days you still have to explain to me why it didn't it work. Yes, you do. I rest like, my case. hey, just just say a simple. This you didn't... you would prefer that, and I and I get that. I would. I see. Yes, if they dating you, guess what? Cause y'all just dating. They dating other people. Oh, ah! Manua, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, give my say. All right, they dating other people. And me must give you a think piece as to why I don't want to fucking talk to you no more. Move. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know why. That's fine. I want to know why. Fine. And if, if somebody texts me, if, if, if we've been ghosting and a nigga send like a, a think piece about, you just been, you know, of course I'm going to respond. I'm just like, to be, and I'm going to be like, to be honest, it's just the chemistry is just not there. Our last couple meetups, and the, you know, the communication, whatever. And I'm going to say that. Other than that, if we're just dating, bro, I'm, I'm not dating. That's the thing. I never dated for three months. So that threshold that you went over, I've never been to that spot. No. We gotta get into the next topic. All right, next topic. Just drop down in the comments. Tell if you you owe somebody your date in an explanation. All right. So the second topic. This is also from Clay. This is also from Clay. Call him Clay. Okay. Is it more important to be comfortable in a relationship or happy? Hmm. I had to think about that, and I'm still Me thinking. Too. I did not. I never till now since I read this felt like they were different. I thought they were one and the same. I don't. I saw something recently, and I think we talked about this. I, ooh, comfortable or happy? All right. I, in my de- my definition of like, so let me see if I can different differentiate the two. Comfortable would be like, this is all in my skin. You're right. Comfortable would be like, oh, um, y'all making a decent amount of money. Y'all have a nice place. Um, um, spo- they spoil you, or y'all spoil each other. Everything is good, but it's like no spark. But all the basic stuff, you're comfortable. Your bills is paid. Everything is good between y'all, but it's a little dry. But it's your comfort zone. You don't want to... There's no excitement, but y'all just plateaued in your relationship and y'all comfortable. But on the other hand, happiness would be like y'all just totally enamored with each other. Mad chemistry, mad sparks, super... um, What you call that? um, Sexual chemistry. Electric. Ele- it's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. woogie, woogie. I feel like... But y'all have really... He probably don't got, you know, a, a great job. You probably split the bills. that's so hard. That bitch probably can't cook. But you happy with her because she funny as shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's, I, that's, what I, that's what I interpreted that as. Interpret that as. I feel like with me, I'm going to say... Um, Comfortable gives also mediocre because you see people that's comfortable in life with just the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. And one thing about Billy the Bad Guy, Billy the Go, I'm never just comfortable. I always have to achieve more. Um, but I also but feel like when you're in a relationship, mm-hmm. when you're happy, you can't depend on the relationship to be happy. You have to be happy within yourself to mm-hmm. be inside the relationship mm-hmm. because it is not your partner's job to make you happy. No, right, for right. real. Okay? It is your job to mm-hmm. be happy. Right. So, it dep- I think it's a matter of how do you interpret it. Like, if you're comfortable, I think we we'll have to lean towards the comfortable. 
Well, because I don't, don't want to choose. Yeah, when you're comfortable, I'm gonna say I'm gonna lean towards comfortable. So what's what's comfortable? What's comfort to you? Like if, in your comfort in your to me is what I had in the past. I was I was in discomfort of I believe my lax relationship caused me anxiety. But that's not comfort. Like in in the, right, in the it's fairy tale land, right? So in a fairy tale land, a comfortable relationship with a a, a a guy that makes six figures. Y'all y'all go on trips all the time. Y'all. Just being safe. Just being safe. Knowing okay. that I'm how I'm gonna think about it is comfortable is my son sitting on that couch right now. He's comfortable. So I, <laughs> he have no worries, a kuna matata. Like my mind. you know, I just feel like com this I'm gonna compare it to discomfort. Discomfort is a matter of someone ruining your peace. You are toxic arguments, not being healed. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're just yeah, just irate all the time. But so so you're saying all those things you're describing is your experience of okay, you were comfortable, so you just were comfortable with all of that chaos. You were discomfort, but we're trying to define comfort right. and happiness. So I rather happy I could bring into my I could only bring happiness to myself. Mm -hmm. I can't depend on my partner to make me happy. Right. But comfortable I can rely on because if I'm comfortable in a relationship, mm -hmm. I am I'm at, I, comfort is what it is what it is. I'm at ease. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about other little things, mm -hmm. right? So I could be comfortable in a relationship and not happy. Right. That's why it is. That's why the, the question... Am I making sense? So I, clap your hands if you choose comfort. Clap your hands if you choose happy. Shantae, come to the mic. She's getting on my fucking nerves today. Maybe it was a $3 margaritas. <laughs> I choose, I choose happiness because comfort, um, my def because my, my definition is a little different from yours. When I say a comfortable relationship, I mean y'all safe, y'all both have jobs, come home, y'all somebody sleep with, y'all fuck a couple times a week, and y'all the bills is paid, and y'all just it's like two passing ships in the relationship. Y'all just going through the motions. Right. Nothing, nothing exciting is happening. Not not no happiness, no real spark is there. But in versus a relationship where there's a there's problems, there's things y'all go through. But at the core, y'all happy with each other. You you excited to see that see that nigga. Right. You can't wait to meet up with them. You not you don't get the ick when they text you like right. stuff like that. So I choose to have butterflies all the fucking time. See, but again, I think when I think of comfort, it's just about being comfortable. And now you can always elevate your comfort to a whole. You know what's that um sleep mattress that's. That's what the, if that person don't want to elevate their comfort with you? What if your comfort level is different from theirs? Yeah, but I the choose happiness. Is, the, what, what, no, he said you could always elevate okay. the comfort. So I'm posing that new question okay. because I choose happiness over comfort. Because mm -hmm. you can have different comfort levels. But now I think it goes back to... It depends on what your past is. Mm -hmm. Because again, I've been in relationships where there was a lot of discomfort, mm -hmm. right? So it's just like when you're constantly fighting and arguing, mm -hmm. I'm never comfortable. So so now com comfort, comfortable to me look like peace. Mm -hmm. And that's why I resonate comfortable with, okay. with peace compared to being happy. Again, I could be at peace because I'm um, with you, I'm protected, mm -hmm. but I could be unhappy about other shit that's other going right, on in my right, life. Right, 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 right. Or dissatisfied. And that's why yeah. you got to communicate because interpretation is different from everybody. To me, happiness can be a sort of peace. Yes. Because I've been in discomfort or unsatisfied in I've a relationship. I've been in comfortable situations and was unsatisfied. Yes. Like everything was going good, but it just felt it just felt like we were just going through the motions. Yeah. It felt, okay, um, we text each other. Good morning. We're, we, we're, we're sleeping together. We're right. cook, cooking, cleaning, like regular stuff, but nothing outside of that was happening. And it was like, it, and it made you a little dissatisfied. Not saying, but then, of course, are there happy moments in the comfort? Yes, but it's not enough to think about a move, um, a die of a black, mad black woman. Mm -hmm. When she was going through all that shit with that ungrateful nigga Charles. She loved the house, though. She loved being married to a rich man in a big house with nice clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. She sacrificed being beaten and disrespected for that level of comfort. She was unhappy, but she was comfortable. But until he... Posey. Till, right. <laughs> until, right. Until he replaced her and made another bitch comfortable. And when she... All the unhappiness, like you said, she already had was still there and he removed all the comfort. So that, to me, in my mind, is what so then, then what happened? She ended up um, dating the bus driver, the truck driver, 
um the guy with the wig braids and she was happy and she ran out in the rain. You know what, she I ran do, in the rain all and I to be want, with him. I just want real I just want someone to genuinely love me. That's mm-hmm. it. And I'm tired of going through a toxic shit. I, it was fun while it lasted. I just want real love. T, you want you want comfort or you want love? Comfort or happiness is not love. Oh, comfort or happiness, sorry. Well, at first, when you said comfort, comfort, I was thinking of like just comfort with being myself and in the okay. relationship. Mm-hmm. But then when Renee was explaining it, I'm like, I also have been in a situation where it's like, okay, everything is fine yeah. and comfortable like by every definition everybody thinks it's a good relationship mm-hmm. but i was not i was not satisfied right. yeah so i guess happiness mm. what you say yeah mm. sorry billy because all the stuff <laughs> okay. all the stuff that that person is making me comfortable with i could provide for myself i don't need somebody to provide just those basic necessities yeah. for me because i'm a natural loner i don't need somebody who's like oh my god i just i don't know how y'all sleep alone i gotta sleep with. like i'm not i'm not that girl i'm not like oh my god i have to be with somebody i have to sleep i have, I have friends that be like i have to sleep with a nigga at night i don't know how y'all do it i don't Only need those from. things so it's like the, the things that are comfort to some women or some people it's not com- it, i don't care about that i could yeah. i got my own job i make my own fucking money i i, I could make myself laugh i got at least 17 personalities living inside my head. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So just, I need somebody to come in my life and make me feel good. Like, not make me feel good. Like, happy to create a happy space for me to be myself. But you should be yourself before. But it's like, be yourself. But when they're, when they do things and it makes you, and you, you're in a relationship and people, I don't know, a lot of people, I, I believe people are not honest when they say, oh, I don't change up to accommodate my relationship. A lot of things in a relationship makes you accommodating. Right. You change up a lot in a relationship and you sacrifice a lot of stuff from yourself. Like I'm like I'm loud and stuff and I'm in a restaurant and I'm get a if I get a joke, I'm a bust out laughing. I can't date somebody to be like shh. Oh no. Bitch. Well I'm the shh. Like oh it's like shh. I'm the shh, shh when you start talking with like, yo, where's the way though? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's different though. But yeah. like we're vibing and you just keep it down. That's a turn off, yeah. bitch, because I want to cock my head back. And- Son, come make your YouTube debut and tell us what you want, comfort or happiness. That's your best. <laughs> Y'all recognize me from the live show. It's Gilly. Indeed, indeed. indeed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, the way you just explained it, I'm definitely going to pick happiness. I'm not going to lie. I like, I like, the, I like the, the exotic energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the comfortable shit. It get old after a little yeah. while. I ain't mm-hmm. gonna lie. Like comfortable, it get, get a little boring. I don't like that. There's different levels of comfort. But every, it's different for everyone. It's That's not facts. levels, but it's different. It's personal. It's a personal thing. Yeah. I'm going to ask that question on the date. What you want, comfort or happiness? Next question. You're going to get ghosted so fucking fast. <laughs> That's the problem. I'm going to get ghosted because people don't know how to handle a real problem. You would ghost somebody for asking you that? Yes, don't. Heavy conversation, man. And that's scaring the problem. The you want to have heavy. It's not a problem. How dare Y'all you? Be you don't want to have away. <laughs> because that that shows you're not ready for a relationship. So you if you run it, no, on the first date, we dating. If you running away from a conversation from that, if we're dating, I need to know you, and you're running away from that. On the you're first not ready to meet date. up, Billy. Sec- on the first meetup. Hello. On the first meetup, we just vibing. We yeah, just gonna we pick a topic and we gonna see. Um, so, you like? what you prefer, comfort or happiness? Well, nigga, nigga, get out of here. I prefer big drawers over thongs. Is that what you mean? That's some, that's some shit I'ma say. What you with boy shorts or thong? What you mean, boy shorts or thong? Nope. I'ma say something radical. I'm at like the that. age where I'm not going back and forth, I and I'm not, that. I'm not doing this over and over and trying to find love. We getting straight to the point. I'm not wasting your time. You're not wasting you're my scared, time. You're going to scare the whole All right, well, get scared. Go, Casper. <laughs> Bye. Next question for the next segment, fuck buddy segment. It is our sex segment, and this is from Twyla. I hope I'm saying your name right. And she said, do y'all like romance with your fuck buddies? Can it get confusing sometimes? Hell no! I don't really think I have fuck... Do I have fuck... It goes back to the first topic. I'm not doing all that extra shit for no date and, and no fuck buddy. We gonna get a little nasty. Don't get me wrong. We gonna get nasty, yeah. but it's not gonna be romantic. See, my fuck buddies, we, it's just what it is. We... Wow, fuck buddy for the fuck buddy segment. So, yeah. My fuck buddies is real basic. I'm we already you already know what you're here for. Like, let's not even act like let's cut the small conversation. Mm-hmm. When you come through the door, actually while I'm unlocking the door, your pants should be down. Um, and let's get to the business. Okay. I wanna I wanna I wanna throw a, a monkey wrench in there. Okay, what's up? Why are people even bother with like 
like, oh, I'm gonna just have a fuck buddy or we just, you know, um, friends with benefits. Why people can't normalize just paying for it? Paying for what, sex? Yeah, just get a hookup. I'm not paying for no sex. <laughs> people just, it's just, I just, Pay just who, think like, about it. Think about I it. Open about your it. mind. Open your mind. Open your mind. Open your mind. You paid for sex before? No. However, I would sell a little bit if I needed to. You know, I'm a celibate. I think bitches do that. <laughs> I think bitches do that now. Listen. I think bitches about, are dinner got, prostitutes. Right, you got rich men, Wall Street men, that don't be wanting to be barber with nobody. They have a little escort for the night and call it a day. Take her to the little, uh, what they call those? What them um, rich niggas be? Dinner fundraisers. prostitutes. No, fundraisers. She goes to the fundraiser, get her a nice badass, you know, designer dress, come home, fuck her, give her. Like, why? But you do So you got to be a. Because fuck buddies, it's a little too. It's emotional. I don't think you there's, know, a, there's no emotion. What about people? Buddies. So that means you're shaming sex workers. No, no, I'm not shaming. <laughs> I know a, a, a promotional cold sex worker now. She <laughs> fucked for free. Um, that's not work, though. That's charity. No, that's a whore. It's charity. <laughs> that's a whore. She is a whore. She's not getting paid, so she not. She's she not is getting paid because I don't have a job. You not getting paid. <laughs> Here she, go. She, she. Hey, I want to throw a monkey wrench. Come here, yeah. come bring the monkey wrench. <laughs> so sex toys has been. I feel like it's somewhat normalized for women, but mm-hmm. men started hating, saying we gonna um desensitize vi- yeah our desensitize pussy. our coochie, whatever. <laughs> y'all just want us to fuck y'all again. Um, <laughs> but for the. <laughs> Yeah, but for the are. for the men, why you don't get a coochie pocket? I te- yo, thank you. So, because especially, especially, the, hold on, especially the men that want to fuck for free, go get a coochie pocket yeah. for all that. Here go my son. Because coochie pockets is low vibrational. You know it what I'm vibrates. Saying? It can vibrate like, how no, 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 you no, want it like, to. Because if you are a handsome individual. <laughs> Why do you need some some coochie pocket? But what if you don't want to be bothered with these bitches though? Sometimes you don't even hear that bitch mouth. Sorry, yeah, I love y'all. You know I do. Still, just go get you a bitch to fuck. Like, why you why you about to buy some toy that's not? If you might have, if, even if I was in a fuck buddy situation, it's some it's you gonna come off you gonna come off off that cheese no matter what you think. Nah. You either either gonna buy condoms, you gonna buy me a snack, we gonna go to the deli. You're Something not you're not finished. buying a pocket pussy that's. Like, what if you got one that's vibrating, you go down, and it licks the balls? Like, oh, oh my hold God. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause, <laughs> I don't want to be a man for you that. You might be on to something. You might yeah. be on to something. Hold on. It's the right We're going to have to have a meeting about that first. one. You ready to hear Sex first? Sex toy coming soon by T. What are some rules for a fuck buddy? I mean, can, like... I, I, I Don't is... randomly FaceTime me. That's a rule. Yes, you got to... Like, yeah, really? That's a rule? Unless they're cool as hell. Like, unless we got that relationship. But, like, I've definitely blocked people in the past. It's like, She's a blocker. Nigga. I love it. Like, you're, you're FaceTiming me too much. Much. Like, what because they're trying, to, they're trying to create a different yeah. atmosphere out of fuck buddy. They're trying to get out of that class. They're trying to upgrade. That's why they FaceTime you. They're sending you good morning texts and stuff. You're trying to change the stratosphere of what we got yeah. going on. Yeah, that's like so it's non-transferable. Nah. <laughs> w- w- Renee, what would you say is rude for a fuck buddy? If we fuck buddies and you go off and be in a relationship, yeah, be a, have a, a have know. some type of availability because it's like the bud man. You ask the bud man, "Hey, um, you around? Nah, I'm dropping my kid off. Nigga, are you at work Where or what? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Oh, I hate when my bud man want to go on vacation. Or they or like don't change the dynamic of what. Yeah. This is my big one. Don't change the dynamic of what we got going on without a discussion. You're just doing little things to change. What we have, and it's okay, and I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of um fuck buddies um end up in relationships, but like let me know, women don't have the luxury of being so peaceful about a fuck buddy because it eventually, even though you could, you know, but when you have eight at one job, it's crazy. <laughs> it's eight. Nine. He's on a roll. <laughs> Are you a chopped cheese? Cause you're on a roll. <laughs> This is a family episode. Indeed. Wait, do y'all <laughs> do y'all feel like fuck buddies can stay fuck buddies for a long period of time, like no, multiple years? They're not meant to. It's not meant for that. Because if I was gonna date you or be in a relationship with you, we would have just did that. Because why haven't a question? We gotta present the question. Why haven't we moved on from fucking? Because we clearly don't really like each other outside of the bedroom. So what if a fuck buddy go through your phone? Whoa. They're not even supposed to have your number for real. Call me on WhatsApp. <laughs> 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 yo, 
Vanish mode. I never really had that many Instagram. fuck buddies. I only probably. Why do you have my number? I don't even have. I never even had that many fuck buddies. Mm. I had niggas who were just like, they weren't even buddies. They was just fucks. Like, <laughs> come here, suck my dick. Fuck me, I fuck you, and go home. So there's no buddy in it. Some of these niggas. Okay, talking. so how? Give us a give us a conversation. How does the how does the appointment? How does appoint, like, the appointment get ever, scheduled? How the appointment get scheduled? Mm-hmm. You ever horny? Mm-hmm. And then you say yo, and then you wait for them to respond, but they never respond. So you just masturbate, <laughs> and then by the time they respond, you be like ill. <laughs> <laughs> Jerked off yeah. already, sort of but that's what people <laughs> cry your hands if you can relate. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. As a woman, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. I can relate to that. So you just be like, ew, over, like, like the fuck? Are you so disgusting? Have you ever yeah. masturbated? And you be like, ew. I heard people say that I've never. I feel like a goddess after. <laughs> Don't break God in this. <laughs> goddess. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Every time, like, just not fuck buddies, just fucks. After I finished, like, not, you know, they finished on that, I'm like, Ew, I feel like a filthy whore. And they're like, why do you say that? <laughs> and I'm like, because I do, because I'm just doing anything now. Like, <laughs> like, so I never had fuck buddies. I just had fucks. I fuck Together. buddies be straight niggas, though. They not straight if they fucking you. Yes, they are. No, they not. <laughs> Your son, what? the son disagrees. What, <laughs> my son, come here, air son. <laughs> just because they, it's. If a, They're DL. No. If a nigga like head from a gay nigga, that's not gay. Any? All right, let's just... We already defined this in the beginning of our podcast relationship. So it's gay Anything, because he wants pleasure? Any sexual act done with the same sex is... Says who? Says science. Oh, s- says science or yeah. society? Science. If a nigga get head from another guy... Head is a sexual because act, is it not? Be, it is a sexual act. Right. There, but for pleasure. It's a sexual act. You can't, we're not going to break down the categories of penetration, blah, 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 blah. It's a sexual act. You do it with another man, you had, you just had homosexual sex. Period. No, you just had same sex. That's not even sex. Head is not sex. Yes, it is. Oral, so why is it called oral sex? It's only gay. <laughs> it's only gay when it's penetration involved. No, it's not. Well, that's what the niggas tell themselves. I don't tell They, them they can tell themselves whatever they want to tell themselves. And I'm going to tell you right now, Jamal, <laughs> you like, boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mixing friends and business is our life after 25. And in life, I done mix relationships and business. I done mixed family and business and friends with business. And we want to talk about, is it okay with mixing friends and business? Now, when I started this, I never really started mixed friends with business. Um, well, I always got friends a job, um, and then like sometimes when I'm a manager, it may go left. How does it work with me as a manager? Horrible. I'm sorry, say it again. Clap your hands if I'm a horrible. Like work with me is horrible. Clap your hands if you miss me though. All right, bitches, but I don't give a fuck because I got fired for that bitch right there. <laughs> That bitch is everywhere I go. No Janet Jackson. That was and just, one thing that was my just son, for shits and giggles. How, well, I, well, I don't see no shit or giggles. The fact, I was giggling, bitch. Uh, I was funny. Anywho. No. Oh, and I even worked they worked together? In the past. No, I've worked with Billy in the past. And I only say it's horrible because you just like... It's hard for, for me. Not saying, you're a hor- not saying you were a horrible manager. Mm. It was a horrible experience. Because. Wait, experience go crazy. A horrible experience go crazy. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Because you are friends with this person. Uh-huh. You're friends with this person, right? And it's like, you just, and they, and they can just look at you and look past. Like me, I'm, I'm maybe, maybe I'm different. I can't look past us being friends. And okay. that's where we differ. You can literally see right, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, and you look and you don't see that person as your friend anymore once you work with them. And I, I can't do that. And that's why when opportunities used to present themselves of me being managers to places, I couldn't, because I just, I can't, I don't know. Maybe that, that's why entrepreneurship is more my speed because I just can't treat people a certain way for the sake of some company. I can't do it. It's on, on some G shit, I can't do it. I can't do it. But re- working with Renee, Renee is the number one rule breaker. So if I'm catching you and I'm correcting you, 
You, what? You get I'm mad. not number one rule breaker though. Everybody breaks the rules. But, but and I catch everybody, so when I catch you. I'm not. They're not your friend though. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, and and I'm being I'm being a hundred percent. That's why it feels the way. Like and then it's like you just gonna be like, bitch, you think it's sweet? Shit ain't sweet. We got smoke. How the fuck do you think is going on? So when I work with you, like, do you think like? Because you see me being fair across the board, 10, 10, 10 across the board, do you still feel like, damn, like, I should still get, like, shit? No, I, I don't want, I, I think you're interpreting it as, oh, those people, because they work with friends, they want special treatment. No, I want you to pre- stop pretending like you don't know me. Oh, special treatment? No, don't pretend like you don't know how I give it up. <laughs> like, don't act clueless about certain things. That I do. Bree, you worked you worked with me. I have no job right now. How would you say that? <laughs> you go reiterate. Come to the microphone. <laughs> Come to the microphone, Bree. Hurry up, hurry up, because we got one more segment to get through. Mm-hmm. And she it's already damn near eight o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. How was it working with me, Bree? Horrible. Why? <laughs> oh, sorry. We're being for real. Um, working with you, it's I kind of agree with Renee. It's kind of hard. I agree with her a little bit. I could say that. I agree with the part where it's like, damn, like, I'm your friend. Like, why am I getting screamed at so bad when Abigail on the side, she's just getting a pat on her, like, you know, she's getting hit. Ooh, 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 I got something to say. Yeah. I feel like sometimes when your friends work with you, and because you and them are friends, they feel like they could talk to you even crazier than people they really don't know. And I think that's the thing. And I think y'all don't, people don't notice it. And I've done it before. Like, I've worked with other friends. Like, I can say her name, man. I've worked with Angelie. We will have, we in the middle of the floor having big, dragged out, cussed out in front of everybody. No, but you play, but you act like people try to attack you. No. Oh, my God. Bro, you act like, I can say, Renee, why are you yeah. late? Okay, the train then broke down and then the train flew. Fucking did. That's not that's not being attacked. <laughs> and then I'd be like, Renee, you got you can come six minutes late every day. And you'd be like, okay, Billy, but what do you want me to do? Like I, I, and I'm there. What do but you, you want think, me to do? So leave eight minutes earlier. You gotta worry about the bus. I don't drive the bus. <laughs> Yo, it was one time Renee called out on me on me, right? And she said, I can't come to work due to the snow on the ground. And, and it I was learned. snowing, but it was no fucking snow on the ground. The bus was not so driving said, on my said, block, and I'm gonna stand by that. She said the snow wasn't being shoveled. I on said my, I, I take the bus. I have to take the bus. To there the was train. no snow on the ground. You don't live where I live. But Renee, there was no snow on the ground. <laughs> then you don't live where I live, and there All was right, snow so on let's the ground. Be honest. No, there was not. I'm not gonna. I be have honest. no job. There was snow. There was snow on the ground, and the bus was driving on. She's gonna the stick on it. She's gonna stand on it. Because it was true. I don't have. A, let me tell you something. How many inches of snow? I don't know. Fuck! I look like the inch of <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't Yo, think I'm a new Son, that, how is it working with me, son? You have to understand. You have to understand. I've known. I met. I met you at work. I met you yeah, in a work. But when life. Gil first worked with me, he was like, "Yo, you don't speak to me." I said, "I don't speak to no new people." And then look, he's my son. Right. I'm, I'm probably a bad person to ask this, because you know what I'm saying? Because, like... You biased? Yeah, a little bit. Just because, mm-hmm. like, after, like, the first couple weeks of working, we got, like, a, a great bond. And then, I low-key, I don't want to say that, but this I'm working no more. This is how I think So, yeah, I got some, a little sweet treatment. You know what I'm saying? I was even to do a little Look out bit. for your friends if you work with them. I don't give a you. fuck about none of this. Gil. I don't care about these people's corporate... Structure, fuck them. Look out for your I'm homies. I'm not gonna hold you. Gil did get special treatment. No, no, no. Right, <laughs> thank you for being you. honest. Gil did get special so, treatment. So, 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 you basically was a hypocrite. Oh, so you want special treatment? That means you're capable of it. So that means you, what you did, you did it on purpose. He's my. It Gil, does, nah. that, no, 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 not, 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 not Gil per se. Yeah. The stuff you do, that means you are capable of doing it. So you're done as a one number one rule. But you just broke your own rule. Because my son is sensitive. Because one day I yelled at him. He was like, and "Yo, I'm a that hurt my feelings." I know. <laughs> so I say real quick, how was it working with me before you got me fired? <laughs> I do, bitch. The audience wants to answer before you got me fired. He said, I don't think you want my opinion. Yo, bitch, I say we had our ups and downs the last three years. Oh yes, I do. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so in the beginning, before Billy and I became friends, I was a come to work, do what I got to do. I don't even like smiling for real. That's why he said I had a resting bitch face. Mm-hmm. So after we became friends, I just felt like you was just extra hard on me because I was capable of doing the job, but that became annoying. 
I feel like the what you pref, the preferential treatment was reversed for me. Mm. It was a, I know you could do it. You got to do it. Do it, do it, do it. So and it was harder, just like, was can I you? catch a little break? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm tired. Because like... I don't like mediocre bitches around me. Fuck these, <laughs> fuck these people and their corporate job and their structure. Don't go to these jobs. I don't care. If you see your friend and she has, she's in college and she needs some paper, let her steal from the printer and mind no. your business. Let her take the printing <sighs> paper and the pens. Shut Yo, up. What, it was you, know, I... you know Shaquita got six kids at home. Let her take food for her children. No. Be quiet. It was one time I went, um, <laughs> we had a job and we had agave. So I went to Renee's house <laughs> and I'm just in Renee's house having a good old time. I said, bitch, you stole this from the restaurant? I did. Fuck, shut up. And she's like, damn, Billy, you off the clock, bitch. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why I'm missing 10 pounds of agave and the shit is at your fucking house in Brooklyn. And I said, you can leave then. You won't have any of my food. Yeah. And you eat yeah. And she said, what are you going to do, take it back? Mm -hmm. I am. And he didn't. Because you can't take anything out of my house. Because you're lucky the food was good. <laughs> <laughs> not don't double touch nothing in my house. That don't, that don't got me never belong to you. It belong to Yo, the company. But as far as like, as business-wise, starting a business with somebody, like I know my friends... Um, like, working with my mother, she opened up a restaurant, and she didn't want to believe that I had the knowledge that I had. Like, I think as much as I said it's horrible mm. work with me, I think I could also agree on that. I'm very knowledgeable. You're of... a good manager. Nobody said Thank that. You. Nobody. I said, never took that away from you. are a good manager. And I'm also knowledgeable just, of just the industry. Learn to shut the fuck. Be, close your eyes and let me do what I got. No, Renee. First of all, let me talk, <laughs> since we're talking about it, Renee has this thing at work where if she needs something, how she's going to ask for it, she acts in a dramatic way. So if she needs... A box. Oh my God, we need a box. Can somebody give me that box? And it's like, one day she was like, we need, we need chicken. I said, so get it. <laughs> like, she just acts dramatic. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I already get but, what I want, though. <laughs> she get it. Yo, fucking Cornelia's going to say, I miss Renee. She used to get, every, she used to ask for everything. We used to just get it for her. Period. I'm like, yes. But like, so starting a business with my mother, I remember when she didn't want to pay me. So she used to be like your rent. I draw the line, yeah. bitch. She was like, she was like your Money. rent is your your rent is the free um is your payment. The free labor is the free labor. So what are you supposed to live off of? Exactly. So that's why I had to quit on her. But so starting this podcast, I started this podcast as friends, and because people don't see podcasts as a business, a lot of people didn't see the same vision how I seen it. So sometimes, whether it's starting a podcast or opening a restaurant, you have to make sure your friends are aligned with the same goals. Yeah, you so gotta I'm make just sure like, everybody has the same vision. Sometimes it's hard. Like again, everybody thought I was the Beyonce of the uh, podcast when I first started, or you being selfish, or you wanted you doing this and you doing that. It was just like, no, I'm a go getter. I'm not okay with being mediocre. I was never okay with being mediocre. Mediocre. Only thing mediocre about you is your your um. Never mind. But I also said like when I was doing this podcast, everybody who was on this podcast right in the beginning, everybody had a business, and I also told them um, you know, consider. I always say this thing: consider the source. Look how the people treat this bit their business. One of my hosts had a, a knitting business. She had had an opportunity. One of my hosts. Um, you a pimp? No, one of these hoes. <laughs> One of these hoes had the opportunity to knit a sweater for um, mm. um, for a celebrity. Right. She never knitted the sweater and never <laughs> gave it to a celebrity. So you lost the opportunity. So if you were willing to drop a bag for your for own yourself, business, you why would I expect me? you to take this podcast thing serious? And I know I went through many hosts on this podcast, and I know I may be like very hands on on everything, and I know me, but sometimes like some people may not see a vision and may come across. So I know like if I one day I would love to open a restaurant, right? I know I cannot go into business with a friend because I know I have a vision and some people are okay with mediocre or being comfortable with the bare minimum to where I don't want a basic, um, what's that called? Atmosphere in mm -hmm, my restaurant. Mm -hmm. I want the lavish... You want Chick-fil-A yeah, Chick experience. I want that amazing experience. So that's what I was like saying. Working with family and working with friends, I would say like I would never, like starting a business, I would never do because... Some people just don't. Because, but, but, but you, you're looking at it from a place of like, oh, employment or whatever. But you have people that really go into business with each other. That's like a whole different situation. So you're going into business like a partnership. So you go into business with them and like stuff. Like, how is how is that? I don't you I don't you've not done that probably up until now. We have. It's just like hard. A, like 
even in the past, like, how would you say is it? It is, and be honest, how would you say is like working with me right now? In the podcast, it's fine. Like, it's fine because I know that I have certain things outside of here that's going on, and I'm a, a completely transparent about it. Like, I'll tell you, you have to take the reins on this because I have this going on, mm-hmm. and I want you to uh, honestly and be transparent with me that you're. I hope you're okay with that because this what I'm working on over here. I gotta take care of that. So mm-hmm. it could be good, and that's if, if this is. I'm not saying this is not my baby. This is my baby too. But I have like a, so I got two kids. So I gotta right. work on my my hair business, which is my baby, and this is my baby as well. So I gotta make sure an old girl go off to college, and I'm gonna get get shorty in right, preschool. Right. That's how I look at it. Not that I don't care about it on the same level as you, and I'm, I'm and maybe not because you've been doing this and you yeah. you do most of the mental heavy lifting, the outline, everything. Like yeah. I don't have any issues with you taking on. And taking care of this side of what we got going on because that's your role in being the producer essentially. Mm-hmm. And I'm right now your producer, your producer and talent, and I'm talent. So it's hard for me, like sometimes to trust other people because especially when it's like, oh, I let other people in and I give them the opportunity. And then some people have mediocre ideas. I remember working with people and they're like, what do you want to talk about on the podcast? Let's talk about why DJ Khaled and this is no, that's boring. That's boring. I don't want to talk about that. That's given boring. So, so you I think, think when people used to do that, you it, it it gave off like, oh, you're not taking their ideas into consideration? I take their ideas into consideration, but sometimes I'm like, dig deeper and dive deeper. Because mm-hmm. you, you should, like, again, I'm not saying I'm the best person, mm-hmm. but you have to be better than the average person. And you have to always see that you are top tier. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want anybody around me just like, Oh, let's just do this because everybody else is doing it. No, why is this? Right. Why? And mm-hmm. again, if I could, I, I've seen people like helping my mother wear a restaurant. She was okay with doing this, this, this. I'm like, no, but this. My mother, like, she was, she had a her bakery. Mm-hmm. She wanted to overprice the cupcakes, and I'm like, no, but you know, you oh, but you know, the clientele. Thing. But you also yeah. have to be aware of what you're doing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just know that I, the kind of person I am, I am, I can't do business with friends and family. Like, and I would love to start a business. It would just be really hard. Because I'm a like, businessman. This, Everybody don't have that business well, mindset. I mean, what we're doing now is a business, essentially. There's money, there's, there's you know, finances involved. It's not like we do, this ain't no hobby, dude. No, fine. Yeah, but not <laughs> everybody has that that um, that um business mindset. You feel me? That mindset of how to elevate, how mm-hmm. to be better. A lot of people's okay with being comfortable where they're at. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like, even like, Working with my mother it was just like, all right, you have to learn how to bring money down. That was one of down. the worst experiences yeah. of your life. You, you have to learn up. how to bring money down <laughs> oh, to my the. Mother. Just to get my mom. Yeah, but people swear they know. People swear, oh, I know how to run a business. I know, but they don't even know what P and L means. Right. Do you know what P and L means? Do you know how to bring money down to the bottom fucking line? Mm-hmm. Do you know what that means? No. Mm-hmm. You just think, oh, let me get an LLC. I'm a business owner. No, bitch, you are right. just paid for something. And you get money back from your taxes. Right. right so right. I mean, I'm not. See, a lot of people don't know the difference between self-employment and entrepreneurship. There's a difference. And right now, I know unemployment. <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> thank you for two... You got anything else to say on that? Um. Oh, I did have, like, I had one little, like, story. You remember that time we was working at that the, the restaurant we met at, and there was a manager. Me and her were good friends. And she was like, so she asked me to stay. This is where uh, a scenario where it came mm-hmm. up. She asked me to stay, and I did stay. I stayed two extra hours. I didn't agree to stay on a whole nother shift. She's going to call me and say, because we're friends, I thought you would have stayed. And I'm like, no. You still have to separate business. And I did, though. I tried to compromise. I didn't stay the whole shift, but I gave you two extra hours, which I didn't have to do. And you didn't appreciate that. But because I were friends, I should have stayed? Oh, yeah. No. If I asked my friend to stay and help me at work, I expect that, yes. Y'all really offended by that? No, because when, when business is not going well and y'all want to y'all wanna, y'all wanna cut hours, y'all don't care about that. It's the same thing. Also, really a um, hypocrite. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning into another great episode of 25 and Over Club. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, and tell a friend, tell a friend. I because... want you to start getting busy in the comments. Start tussling. Yeah. Okay? Come, we leave, need the leave some comments. We don't really be begging for nothing. We don't ask y'all for much. And hit us up on the Instagram and DMs. I love talking to y'all. Talk to us. Shoot us your ideas. Yeah, tag your fuck buddy in tag the comments. <laughs> And tell and tell him what you want him to stop doing. Yeah. All right. Peace out. Eight times.